Alright, in the last video I covered uh, the interface. Now, in that video I talked a lot about tile sets and tile maps, so that's what I'm going to cover this time. In this video we're going to talk about uh, what the tile set, what a tile set is, and what the tile map node can do for you. So we're going to describe those, uh, describe a tile set, show you how to make one and how to use it, and uh, we're going to go over creating the tile sets for use with a tile map node, and then I will show you how to create collision shapes on a tile so that your player doesn't fall straight through it, and in this way you can actually use it to make uh, platform levels pretty easily. So, we're going to go back to our little example game here. We're just in level one, and you can see I've got this little level that you can run around in. And uh, if I jump, my guy just stops. He doesn't fall through. And that's kind of nice. I've also got these these walls here that you can't pass through, and uh, but but other things you can pass through. Now the reason that that's possible is because there's collision detection, and those are done by defining collision shapes. So first, I'm going to show you tile maps, though. So we've got a tile map here, and there's a whole bunch of um, tiles that I've already added into this particular tile set that I've got linked into this tile map. Most of those have not been set up with collisions. So if you were to try to use those right now, um, you'd notice that your guy falls straight through. And you're like, ah, oh, why is my guy falling through the new tiles that I've added? It works fine with grass. Why doesn't it work with anything else? And that is because I, uh, I added collision shapes to the grass, but I did not add it to any other tile because I was counting on the fact that I would demonstrate how that's done, and then you guys would have a lot of fun um, playing around with that. So let's figure out how tile sets are made. Now the first thing we need to do is uh, right here, click on the tile map, and you can see that we're using tile set full 2.tres. That's good to know. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go open recent. I haven't opened it recently, so we're gonna open the scene. And... <laughs> So we've got tiles1.tscn. So this is the scene that it's in. And you can see here I've got all of these tiles defined. You'll notice that this name is different than the other one, and that's because the tile map node here, it can't actually use this scene. Uh, what it can use, though, is a tile set that we export from this scene, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, I'm just going to use this to show you how we can add collision shapes. And then we're going to start from scratch, and we're going to create a new tile map. <clears throat> so, step one is, let's find one of these. Uh, I know the grass ones all have shapes on them. So we're going to look at, like, this guy. I'm going to go and select. Select this guy. Now I've got it over here. And you can see that it is just a sprite. And then it has a static body 2D associated with it. And then for that static body 2D, it also has a collision polygon 2D. Now, collision polygon allows me to define some arbitrary shape made up of a bunch of different uh, points. And then a collision shape is going to let me choose from a bunch of stock shapes, like circles and capsules and ovals and squares and rectangles and things like that. But I had to choose uh, polygon for a lot of these because, um, you know, the parts that I want your player to be colliding with are, are not any of those predefined shapes. So we're gonna take a look at that. So this static body here, I actually did not want to move it. Um, it has this collision polygon 2D assigned and then that can be edited using this. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one because we're gonna create a new one from scratch and I'm gonna show you how that's done. I do not wish to save. So let's create a new scene and I will add a node. So Whenever you create a new scene, you have to add the root node. We're just going to have a node 2D, and I'm going to call it um, tile set 2. Um, now, this is just the root node for the tile set. So now, if I want to add a child node, um, I don't actually have to do that just yet. So what I can do is now I can come over here, and I can see on the tiles, there's a whole bunch of tiles here. So I'm going to scroll through, and I'm going to grab a couple that we didn't have before. I'm going to use these magic tiles, but I'm just going to grab, for the sake of simplicity, I'm um, just going to grab these guys. 
Um, this will give us enough to work with. We can make a couple of basic tiles. I'm going to drag all those guys in. And now you can see that they're all right there. And um, so let's go ahead and move them separately so that I can see them each. All right. So now, uh, remember, I'm going to go ahead and open that other scene so that we can refer to that and you can see what we're, t what we're dealing with here. I had it labeled as Tiles 1. All right, so you see that we have to add a static body 2D and a collision polygon 2D. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go add a child node, and we're going to say a static body 2D. That's right there. And now I've got that. And I'm going to add a collision polygon 2D so we can start typing collision shape. Actually, you know, we could get away with doing a collision shape, and it'd be a lot easier because we can just use rectangles. There's nothing fancy about the shapes on these ones, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to zoom in on this so that it's a little easier to see what's going on. And you'll notice this has a little, a little exclamation mark here. It tells me, a shape must be provided for collision shape 2D to function. Please create a shape resource for it. What does that mean? Okay, so go here, and we're going to go ahead and say, give me a new rectangle shape. That is perfect. And now I'm going to take that rectangle shape and expand it so that it covers the portion of this shape that I want to be um, collidable. I don't want your character to be able to pass through this. <clears throat> so, notice how I'm trying to do this with my mouse, right? And that's pretty imprecise. That's not a very precise way of doing things. So if you want to be more precise, and trust me, with collisions, you do, then you need to look at... <laughs> The, well, we have to go to the texture here, and we look in the size is 70 by 105. So we can come in here now, and we can see that um, the position should be 0, let's go with negative 30, because that was pretty close, and then, there we go. And then that makes sure that it's centered and it's, you know, at a fixed position there. And you'll notice that we, we changed its shape by scaling. And that's because we're dealing with a rectangle here. And so what we need to do now is that looks pretty precise. But on the X here, let's do 3.5 and see how precise it is. And it looks like it's exactly right. And so that's really cool. And I literally just guessed. Um, I just I don't like having that many decimal points after my after my number and and you can see that this actually worked a lot better here. So now we've got a collision shape on this rectangle here. So I'm going to because we uh chose shapes that are all roughly the same here. Um this is kind of fun. Uh we can actually take that shape and I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it to each, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, duplicate, and I'm going to drag it here. And the, the weird thing is if you do this, you end up with a shape, um, and it tells you, oh, its position is all the way over here. So we actually just want it to be moved into that. So now it's, now it's good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. I'm going to duplicate it and drag it here. And notice again, the position is all weird. I don't want its position weird, so we're going to move it like that again. And do that one more time. Okay. So what we did is now we've got these collisions on each of these tiles. So I'm going to go ahead and save this now, this scene. I hit control S to do that without going anywhere. And notice how it already says tile set 2 because that's what I named my root node. Save. Then I'm going to go up into the scene menu. I'm going to go to convert to tile set. I'm going to just call this, I'm going to go into tile maps here. I'm going to call this one example tile set. And uh, notice how each of these are dot T R E S. We're going to go ahead and give it that extension. Say save. Okay, so now let's make a brand new level. Let's go to level two. New scene. Remember, we're going to go ahead and add a node 2D as the root node. OK. 
Okay, I'm going to add a tile map. Let's go ahead and just type tile map right there. Now we've got this tile map, and notice how this is empty. So let's fix that. Let's go ahead and load. Remember, we put it under tile maps, and we've got our example tile set. Boom. And look, here's our tiles. So now you can see we've got these. Now, you may notice something. These are not lining up right, although that looks pretty good. But you're gonna you'll, a weird thing will happen if you were to use this one right now with it looking like that. That's actually, that's actually pretty cool. So I'm going to go over here, boom, and then we'll close that off like that. And just because um, we need to be able to test this in some way, I'm going to go ahead and instance a child scene, and we're going to throw a player in here. Okay, so let's see what happens. Yeah, let's go ahead and save this. We're going to call it, we'll call it level two. Now, notice how it ran here, and it did not run the one that we wanted. So we're going to go to level two, and this says play the edited scene, and now it did. So, ah, we fell through the world, and that's not what we wanted. Now, we have to ask ourselves why, but we didn't initially. So let's, let's play around with this a little bit. If you go back over here into this tile set that we have in level one, we select... We can see that the cell size tells you how big these are. So we notice it's 70, 35. So let's go ahead and match that in this tile map. Notice by default it says 64, 64. So let's make that 70, 35. Notice how it changed this, the shape of those. Now the reason I have to do that is because these tiles that we're using here are kind of weird. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, go ahead and do this. Um, these are an odd shape, and so I had to play around with the uh, size of the tiles. Okay, so we're walking. Now, we fell through the world, and it's weird. Why are we falling through the world, right? I would have to guess, and this is just a guess at the moment, that there's a gap. <laughs> there's a gap in our uh, edges here, and it doesn't look like there's a gap. So... Yeah, that's a really good question. So this is one of the frustrations with... <laughs> this is a tricky... Imagine if that was in your game. If you were playing a game and you're walking along and all of a sudden, you know, just, ah, it doesn't work anymore. So then you have to be super careful whenever you encounter this kind of magical block which can can give away give way on you and suddenly stop working. You could almost see this as a feature. If you got creative with your level design, you could use this to your benefit, but uh, I, I don't think that uh, it's, I don't think that's a very great thing to have in your game. So we could try to figure out why that's happening, and one of the easiest ways that we can fix that is to take these collision shapes that we've got and just make their X scale a little bit bigger. Okay, so I just scaled them out just a little bit. Remember, I like using the numbers when we do this because the numbers are more precise and you can make sure that everything is changing in the same way so now that we've made these changes we're gonna go ahead and save it and we have to export again so convert it to a tile set and we're just gonna save over the top of that bad boy okay come back in here and um, we're in level two let's go ahead and try this again let's see if we we still fall through Well, that's just a pain. So let's see here. Hmm. I'm gonna have to play around with that. Figure out why. Why it's doing that. How strange. What if I have all these style? <laughs> okay, so that makes sense that it's definitely on the edges. Um, all right. Well, that's not fun for you guys to have to watch me debug this, I don't imagine. I just recording videos. Today. Okay, so I'm back. <laughs> recording videos is hard. Alaric's with me this time. Hi. Because uh, I was, uh, we're not on video. They can't see us. They can only yeah. hear us. 
Because the only thing that's important is not our pretty faces, but uh, the things that we're going to show on I the screen. I thought it was because there's a webcam. Yeah, that's just for my mic. So anyways, yeah. uh, what we're going to do here is we figured out that the collision shape was causing a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys how to use a collision polygon 2D. And hopefully that fixes this. So we're going to go ahead and add a static body 2D. And then we're going to add a collision polygon 2D. And um, notice again, we get this thing here and it's like, we have a polygon that's empty. Um, so obviously it's not going to affect anything. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna take this and once you've selected the Collision Polygon 2D, you can click this pencil for create a new polygon from scratch. Now, you could do that. That's what I did. But you would find that your numbers are, again, imprecise and are likely to be wrong in such a way that your guy will fall through. Woohoo! Exactly. So we're going to go here. And you notice we've got this. Um, if we click on this guy, we see it's negative 35, 18, 35, 18, 35, 42, negative. So actually, I'm just going to go ahead and copy these. Oh, my dad is just copying the grass tile stuff. This actually works really well. So I'm going to take these numbers, and I'm just going to apply them here as well. So let's go ahead, and it's negative it's 35, 18. And notice it's it's like right on the edges, which is exactly what we need. So it's 35, 18. It's great. So put 35, and, 18 for everything? No, nope, here we're going to do 42. Now the thing to pay attention to here are the signs. So notice how that was positive, positive. This one's negative, positive. So we're going to go negative 35, 42. And this makes sure that all of our numbers are the same. So now this polygon is perfectly lined up with our shape. And that's important when you're making a tile map. So we're gonna go ahead now, add another static body, 2D. I know this is taking a while, and that is why uh, this is probably one of the more tedious operations that you're gonna have to do. Well, to me it only took like 30 minutes slash the entire class. <laughs> the entire class, exactly. It's an hour. Well, it takes a while. So let's just, you know what, I Once know- Once you what... learn how to do it perfectly, then it's easy. Easier, easier. It's still difficult. Just, yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these again. Notice again, negative means negative, and we were sticking with 18. Negative means negative. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. If it's a negative there, then we need to make sure that we do negative again. That's what I was trying to say. Wait. All right. We did 42 on the last one, so we're gonna go negative 35 and do 42. Okay, again. I get it. Okay. First the negative, then non-negative and same numbers, then non-negative. Mm -hmm. and then negative of same numbers. Yeah, so that's kind of the pattern, and it's because you're defining uh, the locations for each of the dots there. So again, static body 2D, this is it. and then uh, we're going to add a collision polygon 2D. We just got one more of these to do, and then we'll be able to make magical purple land. Um, I'm also learning right now. Good, this is good. All right, so notice that one I made pretty ugly, but that doesn't really matter because I can do this back. negative 35, 18, and 35, 18. And you know what's annoying, right, is that each of these is the same, but I have to redo this each time. So if I find a way, I will make it so that you can um, just reuse a shape because why, why do I have to continually redefine this for each of these? That doesn't make any sense. Then we're gonna go ahead and save. We're gonna go export, convert to tile set. We're gonna go ahead and overwrite our example tile set. Save. All right, let's do this. Go back to our level two. We now have this tile map here. And um, so let's try this out. We've got our magic half left, mid, right. That's pretty. And then we've got our does the lock, left. Does the lock yellow work? Uh, not yet. And then our mid and our right. Let's watch what happens if our guy is already col starts out colliding Actually, yeah. with a tile. Because I, I don't know. Let's find out. So, oh, he falls. So no big he deal. He falls. Can we get up there? What we happens, can. What happens if we put him halfway through the tile collision? You want to find out? Yeah. All right, let's find out what happens. We, so we start our guy spawning him. Um, 
halfway through like, the like halfway yep. through the collision. Let's see what happens. We're, we're stuck. Help me! Help! <laughs> oh gosh! No, I'm stuck. So there's, there's nothing we can do. Nothing. I can't make myself move at all. So that's a problem. Um, it's a problem, but why would you spawn your character in a block anyway? Yeah, you would never want to do that. Yep. So now we know, uh, don't spawn your character in a block unless you want your character to be frustratingly stuck. stuck. Yeah. Alright, so we've uh, created a map, I'm and still we've a new... created a tile set. I'm still a noob at character creation. <laughs> um, the next video will cover how to create a video. So watch. I already know how to create a video. Uh, the next video will cover how to create a character. Okay. Kick, kick. All right, guys. Good. Have a great night, and I uh, look forward to uh, showing you some cool stuff in the next video. Yay! We're still here.